Good afternoon, and welcome to another Moment with Madison. Philadelphia, May of 1787. It was beautiful in the spring, the freshness of the air, the scent of a thousand blossoms, the birds chirping to their mates. I arrived on the 6th to be early and to prepare. George Washington arrived a week later, his magnificent carriage drawn by four white horses was accompanied by the Philadelphia City Troop, the streets lined with adoring crowds. The spring had been wet, so it was some weeks before a quorum assembled. I used this time to work with my fellow Virginians, and we created an outline for a constitution, the Virginia Plan. The convention opened on the 25th of May, with 29 of the eventual 55 men in attendance. Although everyone agreed on the basic outline of a government with three branches, each balancing the other, the legislative and the executive and the judicial, the details of their power and the selection of their members, that was the Gordian knot. I held strongly that both houses should be elected according to population. Each person's vote ought to count the same. Roger Sherman, the esteemed senior statesman from Connecticut, insisted that the Senate be apportioned by state, irrespective of population. I had the majority on my side, but the small states were forming a coalition and threatened to drop out of the convention entirely. In the end, even Virginia voted with the small states. We did get one consolation. Funding bills would all originate in the House of Representatives. The purse strings of the nation would be held by that body closest to the people. We, myself, Hamilton, Washington, Jefferson, the others, we were nationalists. We believed we had to be a single country. We were liberals. We believed in individual rights. And we were Republicans. We believed in self-government. Well, Hamilton wasn't quite as Republican as I. He spent an entire day of the convention expounding upon why the British system was the best in the world. He actually made some sense. It was far better to be a British citizen than French or Spanish or Russian. But proposing that we elect a king for life that gave him a reputation. <laughs> it was a long, hot, sweltering summer, day after day in that room, talking, discussing, arguing, sometimes yelling in frustration. By some miracle, we found compromise. Compromise. The genius of the Constitution is not in its articles. It is in the set of compromises that we made that allowed all 13 states to ratify it. On the 17th of September, 1787, we lined up to sign the engrossed parchment copy that you know so well. Dr. Franklin, 81 and ailing, stood all over me and remarked upon the chair which George Washington had been seated upon. I have often looked at that behind the president without being able to tell whether it was rising or setting. But now, at great length, I have the happiness to know it is a rising sun. We had a document with 39 signatures on it. All we needed was ratification by the states. We had a chance. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great pleasure until we see each other again at another moment with Madison.